All right, it's time for the next episode of Tube Time. I know it's just been a bit of a long time coming. Anyway, the reason why I've put this off for so long is because, well, I had the problem with my computer sound. And also, some of you might know that my microphone preamp, which I've got right here, this is the preamp that I used for my microphone that I made, has died. And this is the culprit. A dead 741 op amp. So from now on I've just rigged up a temporary fix up, I mean a temporary microphone preamp on the breadboard here. Just a simple single transistor preamp powered by my laptop's USB. This is the schematic for those of you interested. Because this setup right here, even though I'm using a homemade microphone, and a homemade preamp. These two sound a hell of a lot better than the built-in microphone on my webcam. And also I was struck down by a bad cold the other day, delaying this video even further. But anyway, I'm pretty much over that now, so let's get on with today's episode of Tube Time. Welcome to Tube Time on Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. So, what are we going to do today? I thought we would build a rectifier circuit and then something to power off this rectifier. This is the valve or tube that we're going to use for the rectifying. Now, I know these are more suitable for high voltages. I mean, you can actually get x-rays off one of these. But we won't be getting any x-rays off that one with the voltages I'm going to be using it at. But first I thought we'd do a little bit of an interesting experiment. Let's see what the actual resistance of this valve is. Right, well we're ready to test the resistance of this valve. Here's the setup in sort of semi-schematic form. So over here I've got the transformer that's going to power the filament. Here I've got a 40 volt supply. It's going to get into this amp meter, then into this 10k resistor, and into the valve. And as you can see, I've drawn it out so you can see pretty much what is inside this valve. We've got the we've got the anode on the outside there, and the cathode there, and inside the cathode there's the filament. And it's not really easy to tell, but one side of the filament is actually connected to the cathode, and I don't really like that, but there's nothing much I can do about that because it's wired that way inside the tube. Much prefer the filament to be completely isolated, but eh, what are you going to do? So that's why I've got one side of the 3.7 volt AC filament voltage connected there as well. Anyway, whatever voltage we get across the tube multiplied by the current is going to give us the resistance. You know what I really like about these valves? These particular ones you can actually see inside. It's a bit difficult to see in there. Now some of you might be wondering why there's a coil of wire around this transformer. Well that's the secondary to power the filament of this valve. I don't have a transformer that will do the 3.7 volts that this filament needs. I mean this one here is about 6.3 volts so that's way too high. So I just wrapped a coil of wire around the core of the transformer. There wasn't enough gap to wrap the wire there so I had to wrap it around the, around the edge of the transformer. That's why it's like that. But it still works and that's the point. So turn the meters on. We've got this one to measure the voltage across the valve. This one measuring the current in milliamps. So I'll turn my power supply on. Of course we're not going to see anything on the meters at the moment because, well, the filament isn't on, so the valve isn't going to conduct anything. Can you hear those weird noises outside? I don't know what the hell that is. So anyway, we've got about 40 volts going through this. And of course it's not going to work cold cathode, so plug in the transformer, this ancient transformer, to warm up the filament. 
and we should see some current flowing. Okay, yep, voltage is starting to rise. Okay, I've got the meter connected backwards, but that's not really gonna be... It's not really going to matter. And we've got such little current flowing that it's not even registering on this meter. Okay, I'll be back. The uh, connection between my meter and my power supply isn't very good. That's why we're getting weird results here, but now the, now the filament's on, you can see, and you might be able to see inside there a little bit better. Uh, the camera's still blurring out like mad, but I just noticed something interesting. This red wire is going to the meter, which is this red wire here is this point here on the circuit. And if I touch that, which I'll do right now, this valve is actually rectifying the voltage that my body is picking up. Thought that was rather interesting. Anyway, let's plug this into the 40 volts, or, well, it's actually more close to 45. Let's plug that in there. Okay, there we go. So now we can see what we got. Okay, so across this valve we have 28.9 volts and the current is 1.8 milliamps. Damn, what the hell is that? don't know if you can actually hear that. There's a lot, whole lot of banging going on outside. I have no idea what that is. And now to work this out we just need to use a little bit of Ohm's Law. Just divide the voltage by the current, and in this case, because we're dividing, dividing the voltage by the milliamps, we'll get the answer in kilohms. I'm too cheap to work it out in my head, so let's see, we've got 28.8 volts, or thereabouts, divided by 1.8 milliamps, should be showing it in the camera. This is a calculator where I reverse the LCD screen, so it's black on grey instead of grey on black. We have about 16, if you can see that, 16 kilohms. I make that. That's quite high. I mean, that's quite high even for a tube. But the numbers don't lie. And just to prove that, I've replaced that valve with a variable resistor that I've set to 16k, 16 kilohms, and as you can see, same results. About 1.8 milliamps there, about 28 volts there, and if you don't believe me about the variable resistor, well, let's, let's measure that variable resistor. Okay. Since one end of this meter is already connected to that, we can just do that. So now I'll just take this crocodile clip here, put this onto resistance. Hopefully, you can see the screen. Let's put it onto 20k, that'll be much easier. Click this one on here to the other end, and as you can see, well, okay, it's drifted a little bit since I said it, but we've got 15.9, so that's pretty much close enough. Anyway, here's the circuit I'm going to make. Similar to what you saw before, we got the same 3.6, well, that was supposed to be 3.7, I made a little mistake there, but 3.7 volts powering the filament, then we got the valve here, the cathode, I mean the anode connected to one side, the transformer, the anode going out to this capacitor here, and this choke and this other capacitor, which is a known as a pi filter, we should get a pretty smooth DC out there. And of course, because we've got one side of the transformer, and so we don't get one side of the transformer's high voltage output floating, I've actually connected that to ground, to earth. So that will stay at zero volts, and we'll get all the AC on that side, on that wire. Right, okay, we've got it all hooked up here. 
There is the complete half wave rectifier circuit with our transformer, filter capacitor, choke, other filter capacitor, and of course, the all important rectifier tube. Well, I'll demonstrate it now. I mean, so let's put this in. I'm doing this with the lights off so we can see the nice glow from the tube. Alright, that's warming up now, and in a few seconds we should see the voltage start to climb. There we go. There it goes, it's coming up. It's going to take a little while because this isn't a, exactly a low resistance tube. But we're already at over 130 volts. I actually do know what the voltage is of this because I ran this just now, earlier. Last night, and I will say that this does get up to about 360 volts. So, yes, wouldn't really want to touch the output. Good thing I've used 400 volt rated capacitors. Yeah, it's sort of petering out now. That's making a lot of noise. As you can see, we're over three, almost, yes, 310 volts. And the tube is glowing very merrily away. I don't know why I'm talking, why my voice is going like this, but yeah. Well, I think the voltage is about as high as it's going to get. And there is absolutely no way I'm going to touch any of this. <laughs> this because that will be rather warm now and I have been zapped by a capacitor that's been charged with over 300 volts before in the past and I can tell you it stinks now, of course the voltage will drop a little bit once we put a load on this but I think we've got a pretty good tube based power supply Anyway, we've got to find something to power up from that little um, power supply, so I've come up with, considering that my microphone preamp has died, I know I'm still using that one that I'm using on the breadboard, but my main microphone preamp has died, I've thought, what about I make another microphone preamp using valves, or in this case, one of these dual triodes. So this is the circuit we got. It's like it's two stage amplifier. This side of the tube, I mean, this side of the tube amplifies the microphone. Then this side of the tube amplifies what this side of the tube did. So we get like double the effect. And this probably won't work, but I'm going to try connecting both cathodes together and connecting them to the same resistor and capacitor. Like I said, I'm not sure if that's the best idea, but I'm going to try it and see if it works. And if it doesn't, well, we'll just see what we do. I built it and it's not working. I'm just temporarily powering it up on my variable power supply, giving it 45 volts. And it appears to be motor boating. I think this is about the first case where I've ever seen a valve circuit do that. Turn the light out. We might be able to see the protection LEDs to protect the amplifier pulsing. You can see the red one going. The green one, not so much. If I turn the volume up, You can see the light flashes every time it makes that noise. Sounds like a heartbeat, doesn't it? The strange thing is, if I back the plate voltage off, I'm powering this on 45 volts right now. I'm going to put it down to about 
18 volts. Okay, maybe just need to back that up. At some point it actually stops But there, it does actually work like an amplifier now. I've got this little speaker that I'm using as a microphone. And if I tap it, it is actually amplifying. Yeah, we still got some zany low frequency oscillation going on there. Anyway, I believe it's because of the way that I set up the BIOS on this. I didn't think it was going to work, but it was worth a try anyway, just to see what would happen. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to short out that capacitor, so the cathode is right on the ground. I need to find a piece of wire I can use that I'm not going to... Well, I don't have to get near the valve where I might burn myself on it. Of course, later on, we will try it on this much more appropriate looking power supply. I don't know what the voltage will be when this is on it, but uh, we'll, I'm sure we'll find out. I'm just going to short the cathode to the ground. I'm taking out this capacitor. There we go. Well, the speakers have stopped moving, that's one thing. Do we still have amplification though? I'm just going to touch the microphone here. Well, a little speaker thing. Okay, yeah, there we, we do. I have no idea what I'm feeding this at the moment. Probably about 15 volts. Well, let's ramp that up to 45. Uh, that's me touching this, by the way. Well, I can hear some hiss now. I turned up the voltage. I'm going to talk into the microphone. It's working. Um, just pick up the little microphone here. Okay. This is not the best thing to use as a microphone, but I thought it would be good for a test. Okay, yeah, that seems to be working. I'll just put it back on there. Okay, so now we know what the problem is. Um, Shagadaga Wagadaga. Dude. 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 I don't know why I just said that, but check it out. I've just gone and done performed a crazy experiment here. I thought, what about I get a little electric microphone insert, like this one I've got right here, and connect it straight up to the valve's filament, I mean the valve's grid. And guess what? It actually works! So let's just take a little look at the the, the changes that I made to the circuit. Well, this capacitor and this resistor are no longer in the circuit. I know the capacitor's still there on the valve, but that's shorted out, so it might just as well not even be there at all. So we have the cathode now connected straight to the ground, so you might just as well ignore those two parts because they're not in there. I just realised I'm not talking into the microphone that I have connected to my laptop. And this capacitor is no longer in the circuit. So we have a straight connection from the valve's grid to the little electric microphone thing. The only thing that is a little bit of a problem is that I have to connect this in reverse because these things are actually polarized. And the thing is, because the valve is going to give out, normally it's going to give out about negative one volts or something like that, that's enough to provide phantom power for the little microphone insert. So I don't even need to come up with a separate circuit. And originally, 
I was going to use an electric microphone with this um, preamp, so that's kind of turned out really good. I think I was talking a little bit too loud into the microphone there. Might have on the laptop. It might have clipped. I decided that it would be a bit of a shame if I ended this video before trying to power this thing up on this power supply here, this valve power supply. So that's what I've gone and done. Now powering up this preamp from this valve power supply with a valve. Oh, look at that. My voltage detector pen has lit up. So anyway, I'm just going to take you through a little run through of the thing. It is working really, really well. I'm actually quite surprised at how well this works. So anyway, we've got this ancient 1960s transformer providing not only the 3.3 volts for this valve's filament, it's also providing the 6 point... Okay, that's a bit weird. This should not light up at 6.3 volts. But anyway, like I was saying, so that 6.3 volts is going and powering the filaments on this valve, so they're being AC powered. And of course, this is providing the high voltage being rectified by this tube here, smoothed by this capacitor here, smoothed further by this inductor here, which is just a transformer that I've wired in series with the rest of it and finally being smoothed by this capacitor here. Also, on the meters, I'm measuring the voltages at the various parts of the circuit. I'm measuring... I know you can't see the meters very well. Unfortunately, I don't want to try and move them because, you know, I might short out a wire, and that would not be a very good end to this experiment, so... You're just going to have to take my word on this. So we've got this meter here, measuring the voltage coming out of the power supply. Now, remember, I did say that when I put a load on it, it's going to pull the voltage down a bit, so we've got 227 volts powering this. This one is measuring the plate voltage at one of the plates, and it is, at the moment, 28.8 volts. Not too bad. And I'm sure the other plate would be exactly the same, since they're both connected via 100k resistors. Anyway, I would say this is working really, really well. In fact, it's working better than I expected it to. Even though we've got one end of this transformer's high voltage winding, one end connected to the ground, that doesn't seem to be much of a problem. But I know what some of you were asking, yeah, that might be all well and good, but how well does this sound? You've been rabbiting on, and we haven't heard a sound demonstration of this yet. Well, boys and girls, chaps and ladies, if there's any watching, this entire part of this video that you are watching right now, you have been listening directly off this valve and this little microphone. So, anyway, I'm gonna call that a success for now, and I'm gonna try and decide where I'm gonna take this next. So, like I always say, until next time, goodbye.